Hello everyone, welcome to another Star Wars Old Republic video and today I'm going to be talking about the items coming out of the Stalwart Leader Command Pack. Now this is the second command pack poised to be released after patch 5.0 hits. The first cartel pack, which will probably be released alongside Knights of the Eternal Throne, is called the Eternal Command Cartel Pack. And this one's now called the Stalwart Leader and the items coming out of this pack have been data mined. There's a pretty comprehensive list, uh, most of these items are complete with images and so let's get right into it. I'm going to go through the armor sets pretty quickly because there's actually nothing too special about them. I'll start with the gold ones. The first gold armor set you see on the screen here is called the Imperial Admiral's Armor Set. Now as both the name of this set and the look of the upper body armor suggests, it actually is pretty reminiscent of General Hux uh, and his armor set from The Force Awakens. And I don't think this is too much of a stretch considering we've seen a lot of the recent cartel packs adding in these links between the items available and The Force Awakens. And you will see another direct link to the movie when we talk about another item coming out of this pack. But, um, but yeah, it, did, it is reminiscent of that. Overall, I'm actually really happy with how this upper body armor looks. I think it looks amazing, and with a white dye, that would look like a very good Imperial Agent uh, costume. And I've actually been struggling with trying to decorate my Imperial Agent because I want to level him up. It looks like um, operatives in general will be pretty overpowered when patch 5.0 hits with some of the new class changes occurring. And so I did want to level him up. I was looking for something nice, and now it seems as though this cartel pack will actually provide a really nice upper body armor that could potentially be used by them. However, what's unfortunate is the other parts of the armor set. I don't think they stick out or pop enough, and uh, there's no headpiece associated with it. And the reason that sucks is because that makes a supplementary body armor useless, because no one ever cares about getting bracers or belts, and, um, and it just goes so low on the GTN. So if you're opening a cartel pack, you finally get a gold item, and then it's the supplementary body armor for this one. That's a really, really bad drop because it's not going to sell well, and if you open it, all you get are two armor pieces that are probably going to be the cheapest on the GTN out of this entire armor set. And so that's unfortunate. It would have been nice for Bioware just to add some sort of, uh, of headpiece, like maybe a cap or something. I mean, there's so many of them in game, but at least add something. I mean, having nothing there just, it kind of infuriates me when it comes to this because this is meant to be gold. It's meant to be the best thing you can get from this cartel pack. And the only good thing here is the upper body armor. Going on into the next gold armor set, we have the Bold Hellions armor set. Now once again, no um, headgear, and you're actually going to see this with two of the other armor sets, which is just so unfortunate, you know, why are they not adding headgear here? Once again, just completely devalues the supplementary body armor. However, this one follows the same trend as the first one, the upper body armor looks pretty nice, uh, but all the other pieces of the armor set, I just don't really like them. And some of you guys might be thinking, these are pretty nice gold armor sets, and I'm not going to say they aren't nice. I'm not going to say they look bad, because they do, they do look pretty good. They definitely have an appeal to them, and I do see a lot of players liking the look of this stuff and using it for their characters. However, simply compare it to the other gold armor sets we're getting from the two cartel packs preceding this one, which is the Eternal Command Pack and the Oppressor Pack. Now, the Oppressor Pack is actually going to release one week after I make this video, and I'm really excited to open that one because it has two amazing gold armor sets. The Friends Seed Warrior and the Unrelenting Terror are two amazing gold armor sets. I don't know who designed that, but they should definitely just design every other armor set in the game because it looks absolutely amazing. And then the Eternal Command Pack once again has two amazing gold armor sets that look really, really nice and unique, and they definitely stick out. They're, you know, I can understand why those are gold. With this one, I could see these being bronze armor sets. I don't really see anything different between these and some of the bronze armor sets you're also going to see from this pack. And so unfortunately, um, I'm not too fond of it. I am really fond of the upper body armor for the um, Imperial Admiral though, but just in general, these gold armor sets aren't on the, aren't on the same level as some of the other stuff we're going to be getting from the uh, cartel packs preceding this one. Now I'm going to go through the other, these silver and bronze armor sets very quickly because there's just not much to say about them. We have the Relentless Insurgents armor set here. This one is silver. The color scheme looks atrocious. Uh, just overall, I don't think the set looks very nice. The helmet looks just too big and bulky. And as you guys can see, there's this big kind of bulky thing on the back, which I think really detracts from the armor set. So I don't think this one's going to be very popular. I don't see a lot of characters uh, finding the color scheme appealing. This little purple thing they have going, I feel like it's kind of catered towards female uh, players, but I don't even think female players would like this. So that's not a really nice armor set. I think it looks downright ugly. Going on into the bronze armor sets, we have two of them. The first one is called the Arctic Scouts armor set. Once again, no headgear. That's unfortunate. Uh, the upper body armor, in my opinion, looks very nice. Once again, it's following that trend of something maybe an Imperial agent would wear or an Imperial officer or something. And I really like that because I think the game is lacking a little bit when it comes to nice armor sets for uh, snipers, operatives, and any player that kind of wants to maybe roleplay their character as an Imperial officer or something. And so it's nice to see these types of upper body armors being introduced. 
but uh, the other parts of the armor set and the fact that it has no headgear it doesn't make for the best armor set but uh, this is bronze and so you can't really expect much from a bronze armor set and the final one is the opportunistic rogues armor set this one once again is bronze it's got these really weird eye goggles but hey at least it's something and uh, i'm a little bit more appreciative of that because uh, with the other armor sets as we've seen bioware is not afraid to just not give us a headpiece for some reason once again, it's following that really ugly purple color scheme, and that kind of really detracts from the armor set. Uh, the upper body armor, I think, looks okay, but uh, the other parts of the armor set just do not compensate, and so I would say this is a pretty crappy armor set. So, in general, the, uh, all the armor sets are pretty disappointing, in my opinion. Be sure to let me know what you, guys, uh, what you guys think and leave it in the comment section, and I'll be sure to read and respond, because I am really interested in seeing uh, how you guys are going to react to this one. In my opinion, I didn't really like them. And I don't think this pack's going to be worth opening for the armor sets at all. But some of the mounts are a little bit nicer. As you guys can see here, this is the T6 Voyager, and this one's actually a gold mount. It has a nice little flourish at the back there, and it's, it's got that kind of style of a submarine. We've seen similar styles to this mount being released from the recent cartel packs. Especially from the Visionary pack, we had the Oberl Siren, uh, the Minas Iris. Sorry, not the Minus Iris, the Minus Wasp that was actually released quite a while ago with the Strategy Alliance pack. But it does have this very similar design, and the flourish at the back, I don't think that really makes that big of a deal. Uh, but overall, unfortunately, these types of mounts drop pretty low on the GTN. Uh, they're not very popular, even though they look kind of cool. And so that's a little bit unfortunate, but uh, Beast Mount tend, tend to do much better. And the next one we have here is a very good Beast Mount. It's called the Royal Furnock or Fire Knock. It is going to be gold. It is a new Beast Mount. We don't have any of these in the game right now. This was data mined quite a while ago, but there was no image for it. So now, this, now we can see that this is actually how it looks. I really like the talons and the horns coming out of it. I think it looks really nice and menacing. And I do see a lot of characters using, a lot of players using this. However, unfortunately, uh, it's not that big, and I would have liked it to be a lot bigger. I think nowadays, uh, some of the mounts that tend to do very well in GTN and that are really rare and that a lot of characters, uh, sorry, I keep saying characters, that a lot of players like, it are the huge mounts. Things like the Monoliths, the Rancors, the Varanticuses. I think those are probably one of the more popular ones, and people want a lot more mounts that are like those. And, um, and with these types of mounts, I think overall it looks nice. I don't really like the purple color, but the fact that it's something new, I'm definitely up for that. And I do think um, uh, it'd be interesting to see how that actually looks in-game. I just hope to God that Bioware doesn't uh, reskin this as a silver mount because they're notorious for that. Uh, they'll release this new gold mount and be like, this is a new beast we haven't seen before. And, you know, go pay millions of credits and ride it. And then a few cartel packs later, oh, here's a silver version of that mount that, that looks basically the same and that you can probably get for like 100k credits on the GTN. I, don't, I really don't like it when they do that. And uh, here's an example of it, the Survivalist Tauntaun, which is going to be a silver mount. And I'm not sure what the logic is behind this, because we have so many Tauntauns in the game. Why, why does Bioware think people want more? I think, in my opinion, this is just complete junk coming out of this pack. Uh, we already have, like, gold versions of Tauntauns, and silver versions of Tauntauns too. There was a Regal Tauntaun that was silver, rarity released in the Plunderers pack, that looks almost the same as this one. So what's the point in rescanning these Tauntauns and just giving us more of them? I'm not sure. I think re uh, when Bioware is doing their fifth anniversary thing, they had a poll. And I think Tauntauns were like the least popular mount. So <laughs> what's the logic behind giving us another one? I'm not sure. Um, but unfortunately, that's just going to be more junk coming out of this pack. And speaking of junk, we have the Z88 Blackjack. This is actually going to be a bronze mount. And this definitely uh, makes me very, very surprised because this Blackjack is a complete reskin of the Slingshot. Uh, the Z something slingshot that was released in the manipulator pack. What's interesting is the slingshot was actually gold rarity. That was marketed as the new kind of really cool mount that you could get from the cartel pack. And now I guess they decided that it would be a smart idea a few cartel packs later to give us a bronze version of an exact replica of that mount, which is um, which is bad on two levels. On one level, it's a reskin, and I don't like it when Bioware does reskins because. Uh, it just shows no effort, and on the other hand, it totally devalues this gold mount that it, that's apparently supposed to be a really good drop from the pack. I mean, if they're giving us a complete replica that looks almost the exact same as the original one, uh, what's the point? It seems like a big waste of money for those people that actually put in some work to try to get that mount because they, uh, they thought it would be cool and rare and, and, and a symbol of prestige, and now ultimately what it is is that it's just going to be reskinned and, and totally devalued a few cartel packs later. So that kind of uh, pisses me off a little bit, but... 
uh, we'll go into some of the good stuff now. Uh, some of the other items in this pack that I've previewed, aside from the Furnock or Firenock or however, however you pronounce it, uh, have been pretty crappy. But we've got some pretty nice stuff here. The companion is called the K1Z3N. Of course, it's going to be gold rarity, and I think it looks really, really cool. Um, occasionally, uh, when they release these droid companions, they don't do too well in the GTN. They're not very popular. Aside from the ISO 5R, which was a very nice droid companion, and it goes to show that when Bioware puts in some effort into the droid companions, it, they can do really well, and a lot of players like it a lot, and I think this is going to be one of those. It seems as though from all of these droids' augments and the things coming out of it, that it is going to have some pretty nice animations associated with it, and that's going to be awesome, and it also looks very cool. I think just looking at it right off the bat, it looks like something a lot of characters would want. I know definitely when I looked at it, I'm like, yeah, I could see myself using that as a companion uh, at, at some point in time. And so that's pretty nice. And the other one is an item that we haven't had in the game for a very long time. And it's actually a health regen. It's called Fearsome Rage and it is Gold Rarity. And as some of you guys might have noticed, and probably you can surmise why it's Gold Rarity, it's because it's a direct reference to The Force Awakens when Kylo Ren does this little rage scene and uh, uses his lightsaber to smash uh, all the, the uh, what do you call them, the, the screens and monitors and stuff. And it is a di direct, uh, obviously a direct link to that, and so it's going to be gold rarity, and it's probably going to do pretty well. Oftentimes, when Bioware adds in these little links and things uh, to The Force Awakens, peop uh, certain players can go pretty crazy for it, uh, especially those who are fans of the movie, and they want it for their own characters to show it off and stuff. And I think we haven't had a regen in this game in a long time, and I think it's going to be pretty nice to have another one, so we'll definitely see how that goes on the GTN. Uh, three other stuff quickly are the mounts. We have the Warhound, which is a bronze mount. Uh, sorry, mounts. Uh, these are the three pets. Uh, this is the Warhound. It's bronze. We have the Ember Act Dog, which is bronze, and then the Eternal Command Probe, once again bronze. I'm not going to talk about these pets. As you guys know my stance on pets. Uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of them. I think they're just junk coming out of these packs. Uh, of course, for those avid pet collectors, it's good news for them that these are bronze, going to be pretty easily at obtainable, but in my opinion, I just don't even use pets. I think they're kind of a waste. Going into Viridian Corona Color Crystal, this is the Silver Color Crystal released, and Bioware has been notorious in their recent cartel packs of giving us really crappy crystals that sell for next to nothing on the GTN, they don't look cool, I don't see many players wear, um, using it, and in my opinion this is no different, this is just a regular looking generic green color crystal, I mean sure it might have a few differences in color here and there, but let's be honest, nobody cares. Anyone who wants a green crystal, they're just going to call in the GTN and pick up uh, some of the cheapest ones, no one's that meticulous in getting the exact color crystal they want and um, and yeah so I'm not sure what the purpose is of releasing yet another green color crystal when we have so many variations of it in game I think people would be a lot happier if they did something like released a pure black crystal which I'm not sure why they haven't done uh, they released a pure white crystal ages ago and so come on give us a black one I mean we don't care if it's canon or not or whatever we just want cool stuff and I think a lot of players would be up to something like that uh, in terms of the weapon tuning, we have this uh, tuning image here. I'm not sure if this is the actual tuning of the weapon. I'm not sure how it would look on, on a weapon. Unfortunately, there's no image for that, and there also is no name for it. But judging from the image itself, this one looks really cool and unique, and so it's going to be interesting to see what the tuning actually looks like. But uh, unfortunately, no more information on that. And finally, we have another new item. It's called a flare, and it's, it's the Eternal Command Flare. This one is actually gold rarity, so it seems like it's going to be a pretty rare drop. Uh, this flare stuff, I think, is something new that Bioware is implementing, and I'm pretty sure what it's going to be is it's going to be a nice little um, image or graphic that comes up next to your nameplate. So in the same way that you can see that nice little legendary thing when a, ki when a certain player has completed all the class stories on their characters, it's meant to kind of show off their prestige and it's meant to show off that, hey, I, you know, I've played this game, I've completed all the, uh, all the class stories. I think a flare is going to work in the kind of the same way, and this one is just meant to kind of show prestige and like, oh look, I got this rare item out of a cartel pack or something. I'm hoping that maybe they'll do something more creative with these flares in the future, but I'm not opposed to, to new stuff being added to cartel packs, uh, at least since it's gold rarity, because um, that does mean it's going to be a pretty rare drop, so hopefully maybe people will pay a high amount of credits for it on the GTN. Anyways, those are the items coming out of the Stalwart Leader Command Pack. Uh, not too exciting, honestly. I think overall, it's a pretty bad cartel pack. It's got some nice stuff in there, definitely. The Imperial Admiral's upper body armor is really nice, the mount's pretty nice, and the Creature Companion and the Regen are very nice items as well. It's probably going to have those Platinum items, or probably going to have some sort of new Platinum items released. I'm not sure which ones. Uh, maybe we'll get more information of that in the future, but, um, but overall, it, I don't think it's a very good cartel pack. 
but I'm not too sad about it. And the reason being the Oppressor pack, which is being released one week from when I released this video, and the Eternal Command pack, which is released right when Knights of the Eternal Throne released, are really are two really good cartel packs. They have some really nice gold armor sets. Uh, the mounts don't really disappoint, and um, and I think overall those are going to be really fun and exciting to open. So you can't really complain. I mean, we're getting two good cartel packs. So if the next one after that's pretty crappy, who cares? At least we had two good ones. Anyways, I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next one.